Hello and welcome to this video about Hooke's Law. Um, this is the equation that um, describes Hooke's Law. It's f equals k times e, where f, f equals force, k equals something called the spring constant, and e equals extension. And you'll get this um, equation on your equation sheet. You can see it here, f equals k times e, and they remind you what each of the letters stand for. What they don't give you are the units, which we need to remember. So we'll go through the units now. Force is newtons. And extension, you've got to watch out for this. It can be either in metres or sometimes you might see it in centimetres. I'm going to put it in metres for the purposes of this video. And when the extension is in metres, then the spring constant is newtons per meter okay you might see the spring constant as newtons, newtons per centimeter and the extension in centimeters as well so just watch out for that one um, if you rearrange the, the equation you can see how you get those units for the spring constant because if we rearrange this we get um, k equals f divided by e so k equals force in newtons divided by extension in meters and therefore you get newtons divided by meters. So if you can't remember the units for that one, that's quite a neat way of working it out. So what does Hooke's law describe then? Hooke's law is the idea that when you add force to a spring, the force that you add is directly proportional To the extension. Okay, and we'll go through and explain what that means now. Force is directly proportional to the extension, and this can be on a spring but on actually any elastic object. So this idea can apply to elastic objects. And when something is elastic, it means it can return to its original shape after being stretched. Okay, so it's important to know that, that the elastic objects are anything that return to their original shape after being stretched. So in your exam, you may well see this talking about in terms of a spring, okay, being an elastic object. If you apply a force to that spring, so if you add weight to that spring, if you took that weight off, the spring would then go back to its original shape. But bear in mind that you need to be resilient about this. They might not talk about in terms of a spring per se. They might have another elastic object or an elastic toy or an elastic part to some machinery or a rubber band or a hair band or something like that um, and just you just need to bear in mind that this Hooke's law applies to these elastic objects. So we're going to talk about what it means to be directly proportional and to do that we'll talk about um, force and extension and how we were to measure this in an experiment. So here you can see um, a spring Okay, and at this point it's not extended at all and there is no mass applied to it. If we then apply a mass okay, to this and therefore by definition we're applying a weight to it, a force to it, you're going to apply a downwards force to the spring and if we assume this for example is 0 0.10 newtons, we can then measure the extension of that spring. So we know where it started from and we can then measure the extension okay and that's suggest in this case the extension might be 0.03 meters for example and again here perhaps we'd add more mass so perhaps this one is 0.20 newtons for example we'd measure the extension we have to measure it from where the spring originally began and we can measure the extension there and let's suggest that that might be 0.06 meters and so on and so on we'd add more force and each time we would measure 
the extension of the spring. Okay, so that's the kind of data that we collect for Hooke's law. And you might draw it in a table similar to this, where you've got the force on the spring, which, if you remember from previous videos, will be the weight downwards, which is equivalent to mass times gravity. So the weight that you apply to the spring, and then the extension that occurs on that spring. And you might have some data similar to this. Now let's think about what directly proportional means. It's a very special relationship that force and extension has. It means if force increases, then extension will increase by the same percentage or the same ratio. For example, if in this data you can see that if we start off with 0 0.10, if that force doubles to 0 0.2, the extension also doubles. If you go from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, you can see that doubling again, where you've got 0 0.2 doubled to make 0 0.4 newtons, and 0 0.06 doubled to make 0 0.12 newtons. So as force doubles, the extension also doubles. And that's how we can tell it's directly proportional, because if one goes up um, by a certain percentage or a certain ratio, then the other one will also go up as well. So it's more than to just say as one increases, the other one increases. It's got this really special relationship that we call directly proportional. So once we've carried out our um, experiment and collected our data, we can then graph our results. And you might see something that looks a little bit like this. Now, hopefully you'll recognize the shape of this graph as a directly proportional relationship already. For your exam and whether it's physics, chemistry or biology that you're taking, you should be able to recognize that a straight line going through zero is a directly proportional relationship. Now, it could be a straight line up there, or a straight line up there, or a straight line up there. It doesn't matter the angle of the line, but if it goes through zero, there is a directly proportional relationship. So as force increases, extension will also increase by the same rate or the same percentage. Now, there's a couple of things that you might need to do in your exam for these um, force extension graphs for Hooke's law. Um, it might be that you asked to read off of the graph. For example, they might say something like, what was the extension when 0.4 newtons was applied, for example. If you're asked that kind of question, you would go along with your ruler at 0.4 newtons, draw a little dotted line to help you, and then go down to the extension line And you can then read off the bottom. So if they say what was the extension when 0.4 newtons was applied, you can go across and down and read off the axes. They might um, say something similar with extension. So how much force, for example, is needed to extend the spring by 0.05 meters. And in that case, you'd go up at 0.05 meters and then across and read off the force. And in this case, it will be something like 0.18 newtons. OK, so that's something that you might be asked to do. Um, a slightly trickier thing that you might be asked to do, um, which you should especially look out for if you're doing higher, is to calculate the gradient Okay, of this um, line. Now, hopefully you might be able to see what you would get if you calculated the gradient. So if we s drew a um, triangle on our graph to help us, okay, I'll calculate the gradient um, just here. Doesn't matter what size triangle you draw. I'm going to do one just here to make it a little bit easier. So if you remember from calculating the gradient, you'd have the difference in y there and then the difference in x. So if you read off from your graph, if you follow this line through, you'd get 0.5 up there and 
So that's a difference of 0 0.2. So we've got our delta y, which is a difference in y, is 0 0.2, divided by our delta x to calculate the, the gradient. Our delta x then, we have a look down, and we get, if I use this point here, if we go down from here to the x-axis, we'd get a point of 0 0.09. And again down here, we'd get 0.15. So the difference between 0.15 and 0.09 is 0.06. So our delta x is 0.06. And we can use that to calculate the gradient of the line. Now, if you see here, we've got 0.2 here, and it's 0.2 newtons. And at the bottom, we'll have 0 0.06 metres. OK? And if you think about that, we're doing a force divided by an extension. And that will give us the spring constant. Because if we rearrange this, question, this equation to make it k equals, if we divide both sides by e, we'd have f divided by e equals k. So you can see by calculating the gradient we are doing f divided by e and that will give us the spring constant. So if I just use my calculator here I would go 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.06 and that would give me a spring constant of 3.3 .3 newtons per meter. And the reason why it's called a spring constant is because it is a constant value for that particular spring. Now, if you were to buy 10 springs, all from the same manufacturer, all made out of the same material, they'd all have the same spring constant. And it gives an indication of the stiffness of the spring and how easy it is to extend it. If you had two different springs, for example, you might have a, um, a copper spring and an aluminium spring. They would have different spring constants, okay? So the copper spring constant K would be different from the aluminium spring constant because they're made out of different things. So just to recap, if you calculate the gradient of the line, you're doing a difference in the force divided by a difference in the extension and that will give you the spring constant. OK, so all the while we have this directly proportional relationship between force and extension, the spring is obeying Hooke's law. OK, but it won't always work out like this, which I'll show next. After a while, you will find your graph tailing off at the end. So you can see here, up until this point, the relationship between force and extension is directly proportional. However, after this point, it is not directly proportional. OK, because we're curving off here. If it were to continue in a straight line like this, it would continue to be directly proportional, but it doesn't. It curves off. OK, and you'll see this on the graph and you need to recognize this point here at which it starts to do that as the elastic limit or sometimes called the limit of proportionality. And basically it's the limit at which it stops being directly proportional. And at this point here, at the elastic limit, the elastic object will not return to its original shape. OK, so at this point here, it will not return to its original shape. All the while it's directly proportional, 
um, and you're obeying Hooke's law, if you take off the force, the spring will return to its original shape. But at this elastic limit, you will end up with a stretch spring that can't return to its original shape. And you may well have done that in class accidentally, or the teacher may have allowed you to do that, and you would have found that you just can keep adding mass, but the spring doesn't go back to its original shape. Now you need to be careful with these graphs because you need to know the difference between describing the graph and explaining what's going on in the graph. If you're describing, you need to be talking about directly proportional and maybe drawing some numbers from the graph, okay, and talking about the pattern shown, so directly proportional up until 0.2 meters for example and then after that the relationship is no longer directly proportional don't forget whenever you're describing graphs try and draw on them work out the two areas that you're going to talk about so area one I'd look at talking about directly proportional up until 0.2 meters up to 0.2 meters and then for section two it levels off and is no longer directly proportional. Okay, if you're talking about explaining the graph, that's something different. Explaining means using your scientific knowledge. So it's the idea that here um, the object is elastic and will re return to its original shape. So it's elastic and will return to its original shape. And then if I write the second bit over here, if we're talking about this second part of the graph, we'd be talking about this point here. So we're talking about the elastic limit and the fact that it's reaching that elastic limit. And then after elastic limit, the elastic object is permanently stretched. The final thing that I want you to bear in mind is probably in class you'd have had the setup where you'd collect data for this experiment with a clamp stand and a spring with a hook and you added masses to that spring. I want you to just bear in mind that whilst that vertical setup is is great and can collect you loads of data, I want you to bear in mind that also in an exam perhaps or in a question they might be looking at Hooke's law in a horizontal way. And it's exactly the same, you have a spring and you'll apply a force in this direction and measure the extension. So just one to bear in mind really that don't always expect that same setup that you see in the classroom do be resilient to the fact that they might introduce this um, kind of setup but you still need to recognize it as adding force and measuring extension and relating it to Hooke's law. So loads covered there um, hopefully you found that video useful if you did please press the like button below and feel free to subscribe thanks for watching